about the materials that we're gonna use for the Belgravia bralette. So here are my pattern pieces. I got the front, the inner cup, and it's just one piece, and the outer cup, which I'm gonna cut two, and my back band. So this is a very easy bralette to understand, especially where the pieces are concerned. What I'm gonna do is use a, I have a very low stretch mesh, embroidered mesh. And I like it because I get to design where the pattern placement goes. And this pattern, again, is designed for a non-stretch fabric. However, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a sheer cup lining as a, as a lining with zero stretch. Okay, so it'll still give me the fit I want, but I have this lovely um, embroidered mesh on the outside. And I'm gonna use my favorite Glimmer Power Mesh for the back band. So I'm excited about that. And I'm gonna use a small kit. Here's my fold over elastic for the neckline. And I'm gonna put a pico elastic on the bottom and my straps. Okay, so I think we are ready. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is slide my pattern piece underneath to see where I wanna place it. All right, so just thinking about how it's gonna look on me when I get done, I'm gonna place my pattern piece and I'll just line it up on this line so I can ensure to get both uh, pieces aligned. Let's come over here. Try to do this. And I think I want it like that. I line it up here. And then I'm gonna take the side piece and line it up the same line. And here's my notch here. And just remembering that I have a quarter inch seam allowance. And if I need to scooch over to, to give myself more room and flexibility of, of the placement, I can do that too. And it looks like I'm gonna need to do that because I'd rather come over here. So, but you get the point. And remember your fold over elastic is gonna be here if you do a fabric like this. So my fold over elastic is gonna be on this top edge. So I wanna just look at how much room I'm gonna have beyond the design. So I'll show you what we come up with. Cut my pieces out. And let's lay them on the sheer cup lining just so we can see what the design is gonna look like. There's the metal cup. Uh-oh, yep. <laughs> Here's the outer cup side and the outer cup on the other side. So yeah, got some, yeah, so it looks good. All right, so I'm going to cut the sheer cup lining out and then in the power mesh and we'll be ready to sew. Now we're ready to sew. I've got my main fabric, the embroidered mesh on top of each. This is sheer cup lining, non-stretch. This is a low stretch and embroidered um, mesh. And if you have an embroidered mesh, make sure you look at what's the right side, um, the pretty side of your fabric. So I've got three pieces. And the first thing we're gonna do is put the cups together, right sides together, right sides together. <clears throat> and then we're gonna put the back bands on here and then put the fold over elastic on the top, the pico elastic on the bottom, closures, straps, done. <laughs> it is easy. And one of the things I really like to do is enclose my seams on the inside of the bra, especially when I have a main fabric and a lining. That means I don't have to cover the seams. I don't have them exposed and it's just as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. So here's my main fabric, main fabric with the lining as it should be underneath. And you know, there's really no right or wrong side for the sheer cup lining. So it's okay if you don't get it exact, but if you do it this way, you'll have it consistent the way you want it. So 
to enclose the seams, right sides together on the top, and right sides together on the bottom. So you have lining, lining, main fabric, main fabric. Okay, let me show you that, show you that again. on the top, right sides together on the top, and right sides together on the bottom. And stitch through all four layers. And after stitching, this is what you get. Here's the lining for this side and the lining for the opposite side. seams. Now I'm going to trim this down just so it'd be as small as possible so I don't have any, you know, just noticeable seams, particularly because I'm using a sheer fabric. So I'm going to trim this down. It's a quarter inch seam, but I'm going to trim it down in half. And then I'll do the other side. And again, you'll have seams just as pretty on the inside as they are on the outside. cups together. Take notes of those seams. I even top stitched on the outside. Top stitching just gives it some nice character, particularly on a non-stretch fabric. Now for the back band pieces, we're going to put those on each side. Some people call them wings. I just call them the back band, but these are like really more so wings. Okay, so now let me show you how we're going to not have an exposed seam here. Okay, I got the wrong ones. Here you go. Here's that. Okay, right side together. Put this on here, and then we're going to burrito the rest of it. The other side, that lining side. lining piece back and bring it around so you can sandwich it. So the power mesh piece is going to be in between the main fabric and the lining fabric. I'll do it again for the other side. And stitch through all thicknesses and then you're going to undo it and that's where the piece will be. It'll be sandwiched in between. I'm gonna undo it, I'm gonna trim this seam down because we're gonna to top stitch this side seam also. Then undo it. And there's the power net stitched in between the lining and the main fabric. So let's do it again on the other side. We're gonna to top stitch these seams also. Okay, here, right sides together. This power mesh does have a right side because it's our little shimmer power mesh. And it's only shimmery on one side. And stitch, undo it, and do a top stitch. Okay, we're all done with the main main pieces being put together and top stitched, the cup areas and the uh, back band, back band or the wings. <laughs> all right, it's time for elastics. 
fold over elastic is going across the top neckline. Underarm pico elastic is going underarm. And the bottom band pico elastic is going on the bottom. I'm going to do the fold over elastic first. And here's the top edge of the neckline. And if you're not familiar with doing working with fold over elastic, um, I use it a lot. So I have a lot of videos showing how to get started. It's there's a shiny side and a matte side. It folds. This is a five eighths inch fold over elastic. And when you fold it, it's one quarter inch. And I happen to use a one quarter inch quilter's foot on my machine because it is exact the size needed to keep the needle right there on the edge. And I do it with one pass. So let me show you how. It takes practice also if you've never done it. But um, if you have and you really wanna up your game on it, get one of these feet, press your feet, okay. It's folding, holding, and sewing. So you're gonna fold, hold, and sew. And leave yourself some handling room because you can cut that off later, but this helps you get started. pull just slightly, just keeping it taut because I don't want it to be too tight going across the neckline. Just keeping it taut means keeping it straight and lined up. If you don't, sometimes it curls. So I just kind of keep it taut. And I'm not pulling too much. And you'll know if you pull too much. Again, it takes practice if you have not done it. Keep your needle down, get yourself together. Just right. I love working with fold over elastic. Such a nice touch too. Very nice touch. And it comes in so many colors. layers, my lining on one side, and my main fabric on the other side. All right, so let's go to the underarms using the Pico Elastic. For the underarm Pico Elastic, you want the Pico that's going to peek out on the edge. What I'm going to do is lay it down on right edge to edge on the fabric with the Picos pointing toward the bra. And I'm going to use a three-step zigzag on my machine, and I'm going to stitch it going up. I'm not going to pull too much. Some people prefer to pull, depending on your size, depending on des the design of the bra, and you just kind of learn that you want more, you know, hug right here. On this bralette, I do not because I, I just know that. I've made it a, a couple of times, but if you do, it's okay to pull right here, just slightly, but I'm not going to on this one. So you lay it down on the fabric, and then your second pass, you'll fold it over and stitch down. You're still using your three-step zigzag. And when you get to the end, the top of the neckline, you're gonna leave a little handling room because that's gonna help you with your strap. Here are the underarm elastics attached, put on with the pico facing the fabric, stitched with your three-step zigzag, and then turned over with the three-step zigzag also. See, it stretches. And then just some handling room for us to put the rings on. What I want to show you on the bottom band elastic, 
Now, depending on the kind of bralette you're making, if it's more sporty, you can get a wide elastic and just lay it on top. You can do this, this same size. It is really preference when it comes to this. But one thing you wanna be mindful of, if you're not familiar with, with bra making, this elastic at the bottom does not need to be stretched or pulled while you're stitching. Use a three-step zigzag, just lay it down. And here, I've got it the first pass only. Here's the Pico. I'm getting ready to fold it. And then I'm gonna stitch my second pass. But I did not pull, I just laid it down nicely and stitched from one end to the other. And now we're gonna put closures on. Here's a tip on how to make sure you get your closures on the right side of the bra, okay? Here's the inside of the bra. Just turn it over, look at the inside, wings open, and then fold them in. This is how it would look if it were on your body. Eyes on the left, up, eyes up on the left, hooks down on the right. Eyes up on the left, hooks down on the right, and it's your right hand side, the left side of your body, the right side of your body. Again, right um, eyes up on the left and hooks down on the right. And then you wanna insert them. And I, I do use a zigzag to put the uh, closures on. And if you have trouble getting past the hooks, if you've done that before, here's a tip. If you have trouble getting past the hooks because they're in the way, use your zipper foot because the zipper foot gives you room for your needle. We go put those in there. Come on. And again, I do use a zigzag because this is an area of stretch. Okay, we are almost done. This is what the zipper foot looks like when I put the hooks on. And I just so happen to have a right needle position. And I'll go back over it. put one of the straps on just to show you how it's going to look. You can put your rings and sliders on the back, your adjustable strap on the back, or you can put it on the front. This one I decided to put on the front because it still looks pretty. I've got the fold over elastic on the neckline. So, and I don't want to assume that anyone looking at this video knows how to put a strap together. So let's do it now. has the shiny side, the satin side. Just thread it through the top of the slider like that and fold it down. And you're going to stitch across, a straight stitch. It's going to stitch across. And then you're going to thread the ring through You could also use two sliders instead of a ring. It doesn't have to be a ring. It can be two sliders to do this. Thread the ring through and then go over it again. Insert it over the top again, creating an adjustable area for your strap. Fold it through. There's the ring. There you go. Now, depending on your sizing of the pattern, according to the pattern, you can do either 15, uh, 18 inches to 20 inches of strapping because you want this um, adjustable area. This is used as elastics get old, they stretch out, and you wanna be able to you know, adjust it and make it snugger and make it more comfortable as you wear the bra. Okay. Thread through.
your Pico elastic and I'm having it, this is a design choice also. I'm gonna have it fold it through, have it right at it. You see it's folded down right here on the side and I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch to stitch it down right there. So after it's on, let's turn to the back. And this is how I measure my straps. Depending on the bra design, I typically go no less than two inches from my center. So if I uh, hook the, close the closures, <laughs> and here's my center. And then I measure from center in two and a half inches. Okay, so here's my mark here. the strap down and on this particular bralette because it's such a narrow back band I'm going to take it all the way down and put it and stitch it on the very bottom and the top edge of the back band let me show you what that looks like so I'm going to take it all the way down zigzag stitch it here and zigzag stitch it here on the top edge I'm going to zigzag stitch it twice at the bottom and the top edge right here since that's so wide. And then I'm gonna zigzag stitch it right here on the top edge. So you'll have, you know, good support from your strap. Plus it's cute and you can see it through the mesh. So let's do that here and we will be done. I think this is a cute little project that anyone can uh, tackle, beginners up to intermediate or even experts who just want something fun to make. So I hope you enjoyed it and, you know, post your picture. If you have any questions about it after you make it or during the construction, go ahead and leave them below. And thank you for joining the channel and I'll see you next time.